All right, so now I have my weaving. You can see now it's more balanced, the weave there. You can see it's almost like there are squares of warp and weft when you look through it. Um, so I went ahead and I just took the skewer and I pushed one row down all the way across and then went up a row and kept pushing the um, yarn down towards the um, teeth until everything was more compacted. You can see the top row still has a little bit more space. It's easier to push it down once we do the next, um, well, it's pushing down some, but it's easier to really get it more um, pushed down once we do the next pass of the weft. So um, it should look like a grid where you have one color for your warp and then a color for your weft. So you can see right here, this is called plain weave. So that's the first inch. Um, and it should be eight um, pieces of yarn per inch based on the yarn that I gave you. It's eight across with the warp. And you can see here on my ruler, I have is just about one inch right here that, that those eight pieces of yarn fills up. It's slightly over, but it'll get more packed down as we're weaving more. So. Um, I would say it's less than an eighth of an inch over. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we'll take the rigid heddle off so you understand how that works and it lifts up every other thread, um, alternate, alternating based on if you push or pull down so that you can weave plain weave with it. Um, but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with basket weave. It's a different weave structure, um, similar to plain weave in the fact that it's over, under, over, under, but instead of lifting up one piece of yarn up and then down and then up and then down, we're gonna have two pieces of yarn at a time. So um, go ahead and take off whatever you have securing the sides of your rigid heddle, um, whether it be those uh, rings if they fit onto yours or tape, wire, rubber bands, whatever you used. So the rigid heddle comes off I'm gonna make sure again that the warp is pushed down. It was coming up along these pegs. I don't want it to slide up. So now what I'm gonna do, instead of using the rigid heddle to lift the um, yarn up and down, I'm gonna use one of these sticks that came with the loom. So I'm gonna go from right to left and I'll lift up two pieces of yarn and I'm gonna take this stick and go over the next two. And now I'm gonna go under two pieces of yarn and go over two, under two. So you can see here it's one, two, and then underneath it's one, two, one, two, underneath is one, two. And I wanna make sure that I'm doing the yarn from the right to the left. You could go left to right if it's easier for you, but I wanna make sure that they're consecutive um, yarn. So I'm not crossing the yarn, but where it comes off of the pegs, it's one, two, and then under one, two, one, two. So I'm not taking something over here and lifting it up before I do the next one. So under and then over. So I'm gonna go under two and over two. So I'm just gonna move my way across the loom like this. If you have sandpaper and you wanna sand down this um, stick here so that it's pointed on one end, or flatter on one end to pick up the yarn, you're welcome to do that. If you don't wanna spend the time, that's fine. It works like this. So I'm just gonna move all the way across my loom, picking up two and going over two. So I wanna go under two and then over two, and under two and over two. And be real careful that you don't pull the yarn off the pegs that's holding the warp on as you do this. So I've gone all the way across. At the end, I just have one lonely piece of yarn. I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's totally fine. And I'm gonna turn this up for the shed and go ahead and stick in this thicker piece of wood, which you could use to begin with if you want to, and lift it up for the shed. I'm gonna take my shuttle, it's still attached to the yarn that I wove the plain weave with. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwind it so I have a piece of yarn long enough to do this, to go across. So I'm gonna put the shuttle through the shed, just like we did 
before and I'll flatten that piece of uh, wood and push it down, push the yarn down. And then I'm gonna lift it back up. I'm not gonna take it out before I um, lift it back up. So you can see here, there's this plain weave structure and now you can see there's more of the um, bigger slots. So two pieces of yarn um, going over the weft and then two, um, the weft is covering two pieces of yarn on the warp. So I'm gonna leave it up and I'm gonna go back with the same shed. So instead of just going back like this, if I were to go back like this, the yarn would come undone. So I need to hook it on the outermost piece of yarn. So instead of going under like I did last time with that yarn, I'm gonna go over that last piece of yarn so it catches the, um, the weft and it doesn't come all the way apart. So what this does, it gives a plain weave like pattern, but it's called basket weave because it has bigger blocks of color. So I'm holding this last piece of yarn and pulling the weft gently and making sure not to draw in too much. I'm gonna flatten that shed stick and push it down. So I'll turn this up so you can see what it looks like. You can see now it's a thicker block of color. There are two pieces of yarn going through this at a time. Another way of doing this instead of going one way and then back is to have two pieces of yarn that you bring through at the same time, but then you need an another shuttle and you'd have to wind another ball. So this is easier with what we have right now. So now I'm gonna go back the other way. I'm gonna use my um, stick to pick up opposite. So right here, these two pieces of yarn went over. Now they're gonna go or they went these uh, the warp went over the weft now it's going to go under the weft so I want to put my stick on top of those and now it goes under so you're just going to do opposite of what you did before if the yarn was um, underneath the weft now it's going to be over the weft so you can see the pattern that we're starting so you want to move oh I skipped one Okay, so here's a mistake. Right here, you can see there's only one piece of yarn that I went over instead of two pieces. So what I need to do is unweave everything and redo it. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to keep going. Um, so if you do have a mistake, go ahead and undo it and do it correctly because you'll find out very shortly if there's a mistake and it's good to correct it right away. You can see I'm manipulating the warp and holding onto it as I push the stick through the shed that I'll put my weft through. So I'm gonna tilt it up and then make this bigger one. So before I put my, um, my uh, shuttle through, I'm gonna go ahead and try to beat this down as much as possible. And then I'll come back with my skewer and really um, push it down. All right, so I'm gonna take my shuttle and put it through the shed. So I do one pass through the shed, beat it down, I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna go back. So this time, as I go back, the very end yarn is underneath. So I wanna make sure, because my yarn was coming over it, I'm gonna go under that piece of yarn. I'm gonna get closer so you can see that, see how it's coming over that end piece of yarn. So now I wanna go under it and then go through the shed. So going under it, this warp yarn will catch that so it can't come undone. All right, so I'm pulling this through. You can see this one piece of yarn here where it's looped around, it's holding that into place. Flatten my stick. Get the yarn down as much as possible. So now you can see this is plain weave. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take my skewer and I'm gonna go across. So I'm gonna do the top 
of the plain weave pushing down. And now I'm gonna go back for the basket weave and push it down. So the goal is to do an inch of each of these weave structures. So as you're weaving, you wanna beat everything down and then uh, measure so that you have an inch of each weave structure. So to continue the plain weave, just in case, oops, sorry, in case 